Over 30 workers and lawmakers are speaking out today supporting legislation that would allow striking workers to get unemployment benefits after two weeks on the picket line. Joining us now to talk more about this is Dan Har, the senior editor and columnist at Hearst Connecticut Media. Dan, thanks for being here. Can you kind of explain this idea how workers on strike could get unemployed benefits? Yeah. And is that a good idea? Yes, uh, I do have a landline. I don't use it. Um, <laughs> Me the too. idea would be that it, it, it's after, as you said, after two weeks, there are very, very few strikes. There have only been four strikes in Connecticut, none I think very big, that have lasted more than two weeks over the last three or four years. So it's not very many people. And the idea here is that it has a public benefit, which is that when strikers get unemployment benefits those employers don't want to see that and so those employers are more likely to bargain faster and in good faith and give their last best offer that's a good one before the strike happens so the idea is that you have fewer and shorter strikes so it's not just a handout to workers and you say well how can this happen two states have it new york and new jersey washington state is about to have it so new jersey and connecticut would be sort of in that vanguard Okay. Also, you recently wrote a column about Connecticut being the only state to ban wage advances for workers. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, here is the idea that you, it's, it, 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 it's called, it's called uh, wage advance access, right? So uh, you have a payday coming in two weeks or in a week and a half. You've earned money. You don't have your pay yet. You want to borrow money from yourself, essentially. This is a service that's really rising. More than 100,000 people in Connecticut were doing it until it was effectively banned on January 1st. You pay a 3 or 4 or $5 fee, and you get your money that you're going to get paid in a week given to you now. So this is a company that essentially floats it. Connecticut Banking Department considers that a loan, and therefore it's illegal because the compounded rate would be in the hundreds of percent. The industry considers it like an ATM fee. That's the fight, and that's where we are. Connecticut does not allow it now, and we'll see what happens going forward. Okay, and also you spoke to Bridgeport mayoral candidate John Gomes earlier today. What did he say well, about this upcoming election? Yeah, he's, he's hopeful. He, he does see it as a David and Goliath situation. As you, uh, as you know, the governor, uh, Governor Lamont, endorsed uh, the incumbent mm -hmm. mayor, Joe Gannam. He did that in large part because Joe Gannam is the nominated Democrat and the governor is the head of the Democratic Party. But he did it full-throatedly at an event in Bridgeport, and the, uh, the challenger, John Gomes, is upset about that. John Gomes is out walking the hustings. My question is, is he saying enough about John Gomes, or is he really talking about, let's get rid of Joe Gannam? Because I don't think that's enough. I think he needs to talk about himself. Okay. Thank you, Dan. That's all the time we have, but we want to let everyone know, of course, Dan writes about politics for Hearst Connecticut Media. You can read his columns on ctinsider.com and in the New Haven Register, Connecticut Post, Middletown Press, and other local Hearst newspapers.